What is up guys back at it again with another Godot tutorial now again I need to do this on every video apparently for those of you slower folks people who don't understand when somebody is talking I didn't abandon unity. I'm still gonna do unity tutorials currently I'm doing a couple of series of Godot tutorials. I also plan to do unreal I also plan to do game maker. I also plan to do blender because I want to make this channel a diverse channel like you will have a lot of game engines here that you can learn okay so no no abandon unity do you understand do you understand hopefully I'm talking anyways let me just preview the game that we're gonna create it's a let's say a 2 d platformer I don't know the gender of this game I'd call it 2 d platformer I don't care I'm gonna hit command B and run the game just so that I can preview the game I also did this game in unity as well I called it monster chase and I'm gonna call it monster chase here as well so we have our player over here he is moving and he needs to avoid these monsters because if they kill him if they hit him and apparently I'm very good at this game come on man Where's the monster here from the left side? Because we're randomizing and here is another from the left side. And one when it touches me, I'm just gonna resize this so that we can play a little bit better. But anyways, when one of these monsters touches me and you just saw, I'm gonna die. You see, bam, boom. I have died, the game has restarted. So basically that is the game, but we will see how we can create and control our player, how we can create these monsters, how they can have their own AI, and how we're gonna do all of the good stuff that you just saw. So, let's get into the video. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is delete this editor or close this editor because I have another one and yeah, don't mind my edit video recording software over here. So voila, here is our new project. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a 2D scene and this one is going to be gameplay, so I'm going to call this one gameplay and in the resources folder I'm gonna create a new folder and call it scenes and hit OK. And in the scenes folder I'm gonna save the gameplay scene, so go over there and save it. Now before we continue let's go over here and import these assets. So these are the assets, I'm just gonna copy them, these sprites, you can download them, link will be in the description below. So make sure that you download these assets, link will be in the description below. And what I'm gonna do next is on the resources and go here and locate it, so open file manager, paste them. So when I go back here in my engine, they are going to load. I'm gonna click on the plus button right here next to gameplay to open a new scene because we are gonna create a player. And here I'm going to call this one player because he is going to be our player. I mean, what else can I say is gonna be our player? Now, in regards to our player, I'm gonna change the type because currently the type is node 2D. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna go here, change type and I'm gonna filter for kinematic body 2d so kinematic body 2d because i want our player to be kinematic body 2d command s to save this in the scenes folder so command s to save it so what is the first thing to do with our player first of all i'm gonna click on the plus button and here i'm gonna filter for animated sprite actually not sprite animation but animated sprite here it is and i'm going to call this one animation and let me just zoom in over here so i'm gonna zoom in and this is our animation for the player. What we need to do is we need to click on it. So click on this animation over here. And for the frames, we are gonna click here, new frames. So new sprite frames, I'm gonna click there. And here we can create our sprite frames. So the first one is gonna be idle. And for the idle, let me just go here in sprites and player. And I'm gonna drag this one. So this is our idle animation. So the first one, the first frame, nothing too complicated. Next, right here where it says idle, you see this box over this document thing and it has a little plus button at the bottom right corner. I'm going to click on that and it will create a new animation. I'm going to call this one walk. And for the walk, I'm going to select all images from two up to seven and I'm going to simply drag and drop them over here. So now selecting the animation over here and clicking play, you will see that the animation is playing, but it's playing slow. So I'm going to take here the frames per second, I'm going to say 12, which is going to make them, you see, it's going to make them a little bit faster. So yeah, this is what I want. And let me just go back over here and turn off the playing and I'm going to click here idle to play idle again. So now selecting the player, you see we have this exclamation mark over here, we need to add a shape because this is a kinematic body, we need to have a shape on it. So I'm going to right click, add the child node and filter for collision shape 2D and attach that collision shape to the on the player. Next, 
go here inside of our shape you see click on it and on the right side you see we have the shape i'm going to click on that and i'm going to select new rectangular shape and i'm going to zoom in and move it something like this maybe move it over here and resize it so this is something you can do on your own this is nothing complicated and now i'm going to save it simply this is the body this is the shape where we're going to detect collisions when it comes to our player so when the player touches something in our case a monster so when we touch a monster over here as you can see on the left or right side or up or above or up or above above or down anyways we are going to detect that collision but we need this shape in order to do that so now we have the player and if i go here in our gameplay and take the scene here and put the player inside of the scene and if so I'm going to call LOL on this one. Instead of running the game, I stop my screen recording software. Okay, that was awkward. So let us continue. Command B to run our game, which was which is going to prompt me to select which scene is going to be the main scene when we run our game. And it's going to be gameplay. So I'm going to double click here and it is going to be gameplay. And this is what we see. Now, I am going to resize this a little bit. So in order to resize it, we need to go on the project and project settings. And here for in the window, let me just find it over here. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Window. So the width of my project is going to be 1280, so HD by 720. The test width is going to be 640, and the test height is going to be 360, so half of this value. And we're still not done because if I go back here and run the game, you will see what we have. You see? You see the player is over here. We don't want that. We need to go back again. So project and project settings. And at the bottom for the stretch, it's disabled. We need to set it at 2D and aspect is going to be keep. And now when I come back, command B, we're going to see our player and it looks really nice. So now we have our really, really cool game. It looks, I mean, it looks nice on the window for HD resolution. So what is the next step to do? Let's go over here in our resources folder and create a new folder that I'm going to call scripts. So scripts folder and inside of that folder, I'm going to right click and create a new script. I'm going to choose here C sharp and let's go over here and new script and I'm going to call this one player and I'm going to hit create and it's going to create it. And here in the gameplay scene, select or actually in the player scene, select the player and go here for the scripts and load it. So from the scripts folder, we're going to load the player script and let me just double click on it and open it in Visual Studio because we are going to use Visual Studio for this. And here I'm going to keep it in the dock or unkeep it from the dock. So let's go over here. What do we need in our player script? What is that thing that we need? Well, we always need a couple of variables, variables. but before that, let me just tag the class and move a little bit down and move this this here and this is going to be this is not going to be process but it's going to be physics process so we're going to have a physics process and here above we are going to inherit from kinematic body so kinematic body 2d instead of the node we're going to have a private vector 2 which is going to be our movement and i'm going to call that one by default vector to zero Next, we're going to have a private float, which is going to be our move underscore speed. By default, I'm going to say it's 400. And these variables are self-explanatory. So movement, we're going to use for the movement speed. We're going to use for the speed. Now, moving forward, we're going to have a private float gravity, which is going to be equal to 20. I know gravity is 8.9.8, but I don't care. I'm going to set it in 20, breaking the laws of physics over here. And we are also going to have a private flow. This is going to be our jump underscore force. By default, I'm going to say negative 900. We are going to have here also a private vector 2, which is going to be up direction. So up dir is equal to vector 2 up like this. And basically that's that. Later on we will have for animation here, we will have a private animated sprite, which I'm going to call animation, but that will come, don't worry about that. Now, inside of the player movement, which is something that we did not create, so here player movement like this, and inside of the player movement is where we are going to detect the input, but first of all let me just format this, 
and call the player movement inside of the physics process. So this is where I'm going to call it. Now, inside of the player movement, what we're going to do is we're going to detect if our input, so if input dot is key, so is key pressed, and or actually is action. So we're going to use an action. So is action pressed and the action is going to be here in quotes and I'm going to call this one move right. So move right. And as you can assume, I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to say else if input is move left. And also here we're going to have else. So we're going to have all of these statements. So what is going to happen next? What, what we're going to do? Well, if we're moving right, right, we're going to move the player right. If we're moving left, we're going to move left. But before that, we need to copy these. And so we need to go back here in our engine and project and project settings. And here for the input map, I'm going to paste move right. I'm also going to paste move left and I'm also going to type here jump. So we're going to have jump as well. Now here for our move left or actually move right, I'm going to click on the plus button and select a key. And that key is going to be D. So I click D on my keyboard. I'm going to click OK. Click on the plus button and key again and right arrow and click OK. So now we have the right key as well or the right arrow key. Click on the plus button and key and I'm going to click A now and click OK and click on the plus button for move left key and left arrow, which is going to say left, and I'm going to click OK. For the jump, click on it, key, space, OK. And now we're good to go because now you see here on our move right, we have the D and the right, on move left, A and left, and on jump we have space, which means in our game or in when we press that button. So here for the right, when we press D or, or right arrow, we're gonna move to the right side. And here for the left, if we press the A key or left arrow, we're gonna move to the left. And when we press space, we're gonna jump. So what's gonna happen here in our move right is when we click on it, we're gonna say movement X is equal to move speed like this. And when we press the left button, we're gonna say movement X is equal to negative of move speed. So move speed. So now we have we have the negative because the left side is the negative side and here we have the player movement. I'm just going to tag it because at the bottom of our player movement, we're simply going to say move and slide, which is a built-in function from the kinematic body. So here simply we're going to call movement and we are good to go. Now, of course, if I go back in our engine command B to test this out, we are going to have some complications, but you're going to see what you see now when I move, you see, first of all, we don't have gravity. Second, I'm, I simply press the key once. I'm not pressing it currently. I released it, but he's still moving. You see, press once and he's moving to the right or the left side, depending on what key have I pressed. So this is awkward, as you can see, we don't want our player to move like this, but maybe you want, if you want to, you can leave the code like this, but if you don't, in the else, when we don't press anything, movement X is going to be equal to zero, because here we're going to reset it. If I go back now, and actually I need to go back in my engine, so command B, if I go back in my engine, you see what's going to happen? Like this. And now when I release it, he's going to stop. When I move it, he is still there, he is, well, stopping. When I move him, he is moving. When I release it, he is stopping. So that's why here in the L statement, we need to set movement X is equal to zero because if we don't want to move, then we need to reset the movement back. Now, also in regards to our gravity, here we're going to say movement.y plus equals gravity, which is going to apply this gravity to our player. Now, as you can see, it's going to apply this gravity to the player. And if I go back in our engine and command B, we are going to see that the player will fall down. Now, in order to fix that, we need to go back here in our game plane. First of all, I'm going to right click here and add a child node. I'm simply going to add a node 2D. And this node 2D I'm going to move it here. This is going to be our BG parent and I'm going to duplicate one and another one is going to be our ground parent. Now the ground parent, I'm going to right click on it and change the type. It's going to be a static body. So it's going to be a static body and I'm going to save it. But let's go over here for the ground parent or actually for the BG parent. So let me just find our background. So we have the sprites, we have the player. Here is our background. So this is our background and I'm going to put this one as a child of the BG parent. 
Now select the background and here I'm going to rename it to background one because we're going to have multiple of these and let's go over here in the offset I'm going to click on this centered so I don't want it to be centered and for the transform I'm going to say zero zero for x and y and I'm going to duplicate it so now we have background two and for the transform of background two for the y position I'm going to say 700 or negative excuse me 720 which is going to move the background over here as you can see. Now how we're going to create our backgrounds is that we are simply going to move them by we are going to move them if I select both of them and duplicate them. So now we have background three and I'm not going to make it as a child. So move it over here. So we have background three and background four. If I go over here for the transform and on the X axis for both of them, I'm going to say 1280 is going to move them as you can see right over here. So 1280 is going to move them over here, duplicate them again. So now we have five and six. So copy these and 1280 and 1280. How much is that? I'm not good at math, so yeah, uh, I have no idea about math. So 1280 plus 1280, that's 2560. So here I'm going to say 2560, as you can see right here. And again, duplicate them. So I'm going to duplicate them. We're going to have 7 and 8. So for these, we also need to add 1280. So how much is that? So 1280. So let me just calculate that. So 1280, 3840. So 3840. Let's go over here, do the same thing for these. You get the point. This is what you need to do. So let me just move the 10 over here and select the 10 and 9, add 1280. So let me say here 1280, 5000 and 5,000 and 120. And this is enough. Of course, you're going to do the same thing for the right side as well. So I'm going to duplicate here background one and two. Let me just move them down. So now we have here, no, not as children of background 10. So background 10 needs to go over here. So select these two. And now these are going to go on the negative 1280. You get the point. So do that up to negative. So up to negative. 5,120 and we're going to do the same thing for our ground. So here for the ground parent, I'm going to select the ground, put it over here. So this is going to be our ground one like this. And let me just offset it. So I'm not going to offset it. I'm going to un uncenter it, so to say. So I'm going to uncenter the ground and the first ground, I'm going to position at zero here and Y is going to be six, five two so yeah this is going to be for our first ground i'm going to duplicate it move the ground over here and not like this so move it over here let me select it and i'm going to hold shift to put it right next to the other one so select the ground and this one let me just select here the y is going to be six five two and the X is going to be 450, as you can see. So 450, and I'm gonna do that for another ground. So let's go here, 450, that's 900. We have the grounds here currently. We are going to have the grounds all over where the backgrounds are. I'm just gonna test the player's movement. So I'm gonna test the player movement, then I'm going to pause the video, form all of these grounds, and then you're going to see what we have. But before that, select the ground parent, right click and add a child node. And we're going to add here a collision shape because we need to do that. And for the collision shape, I'm going to go here and select a rectangular shape and it's right here. So what I need to do with the collision shape is resize it a little bit, take the collision shape and position it over here. And let me just resize it so that it fits the ground so that we can land on it. So if I command B now, so command B, now we stand on the ground. You see, we stand on the ground. We can move as you can see, I still cannot jump. We will do that starting from the next video because I wanted to create these grounds. I wanted to create the backgrounds and now we are moving with the player. And now I am going to pause the video, form all the grounds and the backgrounds and come back so you can copy and paste this or simply download the complete project and copy and paste this. So I'll back, be back in a moment. Okay, I am back. And as you can see what I did, I simply duplicated these backgrounds and then I repositioned them. I duplicated the grounds and positioned them. So the difference between the grounds, if I take the ground one, you see it's at X position zero. Y position will be the same. So 652, that's for every single ground. 
So don't touch the Y. For the X, as you can see, the position for the first one is X at zero. The next one is 450, which means every next one is at 450 units to the left or to the right side, as you can see. So when I move these on the left side, so this one is gonna be 450. Next one is going to be 900, because 450 plus 450 plus 450, it's 900. So now take 900 and add to it 450, which is 1350. So add again, 450, that's 1800, so on and so forth, you get the point. This is to the right side. To the left side, the negative one is the same numbers, but only negative. So let me just find here this ground, I believe. So from ground 16, it's negative 450, then ground 17, it's negative 900, then 18 negative, 1350, you get the point. So you're going to do this on your own. It's a bit tedious for you to watch me to create all of this. It's not fun, but this is part of game development, so you need to do it. And the same thing for our backgrounds. So if you take a look at here, the first background, so both of these are at zero for the X. Now for the Y, this one is at negative 720, so the above one, and every background that's above, you see we have two of these, so the one that's up, it's at Y position negative 720. Only X position would change. And the X position will change for 1000 or 1280, so 1280. So if, for example, we have background one at zero, if we want to add the next one to it, then it will be at X 1280. Then the next one is at X 1280 multiplies by two, then by three, you get the point. You just add to it the, that value and it will position it right next to each other. I also added this moon just so it adds a little bit depth to our game, it looks nice. So yeah, nothing in particular, it will not change our game. Our game can function without it, but basically, yeah, this is this is setting up our level and creating players movement. So starting from the next video, we're gonna animate the player, make him jump. So we'll see you then.